As the legendary Carl Sagan said in the Cosmos series, our species is young and curious and brave. Curiosity has led humanity to make the most astonishing discoveries about the surrounding world and themselves. Our species created the most advanced code for communication, which we know as language. In the previous video, we looked into two interrelated questions. What is the nature of the language we speak? And what is language made of? We took a glimpse at Chomsky's competence performance dichotomy and Heim's speaking framework. However, the history of our curiosity about language can be traced back to earlier times. In this video, we will take a look at the beginning of the 20th century. The prevailing view in linguistics on the nature of language for the most part of the 20th century was formulated by a Swiss linguist called Ferdinand de Saussure in his lectures delivered between 1906 and 1911 at the University of Geneva. Later, two linguists by the name of Albert Sechet and Charles Bally edited these lectures and published them as a book entitled Course in General Linguistics in 1916, which became one of the most influential publications in the history of linguistics. One of the most important contributions of Saussure's was the distinction that he made between the actual moments of language use and the underlying structures of the system that allows the actualization of these moments of language use. He referred to the former as parole or speech and the latter as lang or language. In his words, parole refers to the concrete utterances or the speech which is individual specific. On the other hand, lang or language is the underlying system which exists in the brain of all speakers of the language, in a collectivity rather than in one individual. When we are born, we begin to assimilate or absorb the language system or lang. This system exists as a result of an unwritten agreement between the members of the community. So one individual has no control over language since language is a social phenomenon and is stored in the minds of all people. This means that language or lang is homogeneous, whereas speech or parole is heterogeneous and varies from person to person depending on their life experiences. Language sits in the brain of the mass or the people and is in the form of sound image and is therefore psychological. But speech is physiological and physical and the product of muscle movements. Language can be represented in written forms as written words in, for example, dictionaries and grammar books. So Sora therefore concludes that language is a system of signs that express ideas. He also went on to introduce a science that studies the life of signs within society. He called this science semiology. So Saussure took an evolutionary perspective and argued that the use of articulation organs to translate language into speech was an arbitrary choice made by primitive humans, our ancestors, since, according to him, there was no compelling evidence that speech organs actually evolved to create speech, unlike, for example, legs that evolved for bipedalism. In other words, primitive humans could have chosen another instrument like body language or a written system to produce speech to communicate. Now, let's recap what we have covered so far. Language, or lang, according to Saussure, is the invisible part of our communication system which exists in a collectivity. That is, it's stored in the brains of the speakers of the language. Speech, or parole, on the other hand, is the perceptible part of language which is individual and changes during our lifetime. In the next video, we will unpack more of Saussure's revolutionary ideas and contributions to the field of linguistics. Stay tuned in!